Um, so real quick, I want to, I want to demonstrate something from, from Garvey again, <laughs> which I found that was interesting. Uh, it's a lot of reading. I don't want to read all that. Okay. I'll read some of it. So in, in lesson 15 of Marcus Garvey, Message to the People, the Course of African Philosophy. And again, we, we, you know, we uphold Garvey as our forerunner, right? So he has a very high title in the Morris Science Temple of America. Islam, we honor Marcus Garvey for what he brought you know, to our people to get them prepared to receive the, the, the message of the coming king. You know, many of the, uh, of the first members of the Morris Science Temple of America came from you know, the UNIA, Universal Negro Improvement Association, right? And it was easy for them to make that, that, that progress, or that, um, it was easy for them to make that um, transition from that organization to another, I don't think they actually gave up membership, right? right? But they joined this to, to add on to what they already had, wow. right? Because they recognized, because Garvey helped them see nationalism, right? He had helped them see what nationalism was supposed to, to mean for our people, right? And so he brought them symbols of national, nationalism, which as I said earlier, was a red, black, and green flag. And they had particular principles that were attached to them, Islam. So when, when, the, you know, when the prophet came on the scene with nationality, because that's what Garvey was preparing the people for, for nationality, right? So it wasn't his job to teach them nationality. It was his job to prepare them for it, Islam. So when the prophet came, he brought the red flag with the five-pointed green star in the center, right? And that same flag represented diff you know, different principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, right? So it was easy for the people, to, the people of uh, Marcus Garvey's organization to see what was, what was to come to them. Marcus Garvey himself said that would be an even more powerful John the Baptist that was going to come after him. Mm. Islam? Right. So who other than he, that he was talking to than, than talking about than the Prophet Noble Jirali? Islam. Islam was? Islam. So we give honors to, to Marcus Garvey and we give honors to the lessons that he brought because if you put Noble Jirali and, uh, and uh, Marcus Garvey's lessons you know, side by side, you'll see that they're saying the exact same thing. Islam? So I want to read chapter 15, lesson 15 on personality um, in this particular text. Again, Marcus Garvey, Message to the People, The Course of African Philosophy. It says, a thing to impress the world with is your own personality. Your makeup as a man or woman must be so clean cut as to leave nothing to suggest the, the incompleteness of a perfect person. We heard something like that now, right? in our Quran, right? Uh -huh. Chapter one, it says, perfected man, right? He said per perfect person. It says perfected man must pass through all the ways of life, and so carnal nature was full manifest, a nature that was spring forth from fle fleshy things. Uh, and it says without a force, soldier never knows his strength, and thought must be developed by the exercise of strength. So he says that your makeup as a man or woman must be so clean cut as, leave, as to leave nothing to suggest the incompleteness of a perfect person. Man is, always disposed, man is always disposed to respect and honor those who show themselves observant of all the rules of manly dignity and character. Islam? Islam. We have rules, right? That's right, Islam. What are our main rules? Divine constitution and bylaws. Islam? Islam. Then we have the additional laws for Moorish Americans. That's right. Then we have the rules in the Quran. These are laws too. That's right. these, are, these are divine laws. That's right. Islam? It says, it is said by some philosopher that cleanliness is next to godliness. We got that in our one-on-one -on -one questions, right? Islam. White means purity. Purity means God. God means rule of the land. Right. Okay. Therefore, always be clean cut in your appearance. Right? right? Because the teaching should, should manifest how you look too. Right? right? It should manifest in your appearance. Right? So when we leave the house, we should be clean cut. Right. We should be properly dressed. That's right. Islam? Come on, Mom. Therefore, always be clean cut in your appearance when you meet others, and particularly the public. Mm -hmm. Never be slack in your appearance. At any time in meeting another person or persons, be neat and clean in appearance, even in your own household. Mm -hmm. Because the, the moment you throw off the reserve of your personality, you invite disrespect 
for your own person. Read it again. One more time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never be slack in your appearance. At any time in meeting another person or persons, be neat and clean in appearance, even in your own household, because the moment you throw off the reserve of your personality, you invite disrespect for your person. Mm. Wow. Ain't that heavy? You know, as the Grand Sheik says, uh, you know, oftentimes, you know, the, your true self is when you're alone, mm -hmm. right? That's, you know, when you really know who you are, when you're alone. Because the things that you do when you're alone should be the same things that you would do in the public. That's not what we See, we like to hide stuff in the background. That's right. You know, we go home and we, you know, we, you know, we go to the, to the, can't say that on holiday. We go to different places <laughs> that don't represent the, you know, that, that don't represent the highest uh, uh, principles of life. Islam. Islam. We go and partake in things that don't uh, benefit our own, you know, um, that don't benefit our own progress, that don't help, with, you know, help us in our own health, mm -hmm. right? That creates, the, 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 uh, that creates what breathes by the, what's breathed by the lower self, which is hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harms, right? So if we practice these things when we're alone, then they become easier when we're in the public. Islam, anybody play sports? Islam. Why do you go to practice? Islam. To get better. To get better, Islam. right? Why else? To strategize. To strategize. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so what? Uh, Islam. 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 Or first nature. <laughs> well, yeah. right? That's right? No, you're right. I'm just, I'm just Adam. Yeah, to condition yourself, right? So, in, in, you know, in sports, you know, our, our coach would say, you know, go hard in, in the practice so that it'll be easy in the game. Islam? Go hard in practice so it'll be easy in the game. Go hard at home so it'll be easier in life. Islam? Do what you're supposed to do when you're alone. Practicing good thoughts, right? Eating good foods. Drinking good drinks, right? I ain't talking about the soul food that, you know, society tell us that's called soul food because that destroys our soul. So eat some, right? <laughs> so, so see, eat some real good soul food, right? Um, but do these things so that when you're out, you know, amongst the community, amongst, you know, other people, it's easy. It's second nature, as the brother said, right? Then, you know, things don't come out of our mouth. With, with the, the teaching, uh, who was it, said, um, uh, it's not what goes in in the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out. Islam. So, Islam, please make sure all cell phones on uh, vibrate or silent, please. Gratitude. Why, sir? Islam. Oh, I got two phones. I'm sorry. Praise Allah. I had two phones. <laughs> I was well. I got a, I got, I got a phone for my work too, so it, <laughs> so praise a lot. But you know, it's it's not what goes into you know in a man that defiles him. It's what comes out, right? So we have to practice these things when we're alone, right? Do your prayers, right? Give give gratitude to to you know to Allah, right? And when you do these things, they become second nature. Islam was says. As far as your personal attire is concerned, always see that it is in style. <laughs> see, Garvin's saying, be fly. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> be fly. You ain't got to be, you know, yeah, be fly. That's right. You know, and you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to look good. That's right. You know, you don't have to wear all the European designer clothes. We ain't Europeans, you know. I'm talking to myself, too, so, you know, I'm not judging nobody. But we don't have to do all that to look good, right? But be neat. You know, iron your stuff. Watch it. Islam? As far as your, your personal attire is concerned, I always see that it is in style, in proper shape, and presentable before you appear outside of yourself. <laughs> mm. Outside of yourself. Mm. Man is not the body, nor the soul, but the spirit, part of our life. Islam. Islam? Appearing outside of your spirit. Your, your physical form. All right, anyway. Um, always appear at your best, even though you may be suffering under under the greatest difficulties of strain, because by that very good appearance, you may win support to enable you to get out 
of your difficulties. Never let your difficulties weigh you down to such an extent as to forget the presentableness of your person, of your personality. The world is always looking first for defects. Mm -hmm. All right? The world is always looking first for your defects. Before they tabulate your virtues, what's the higher self? Just checking. The world is always looking first for your defects. Before they tabulate your virtues, see to it that nothing is defective about your appearance from your shoes to your, to your dollar, <laughs> from your shoes to your dollar, from your toes to your head, from your nails to your mouth. For in search of this, they will strike upon the, uh, upon the one defect. You know, we, we, oftentimes we get people who are, um, you know, who step out to, to defend the cause of the, of the Asiatic people, right? And the first thing we do is, and myself included, right? First thing we do is, is, is bring up something that, was, that we heard bad about them and say they're, that they're not proper to represent, our, you know, our issues. Right. And so again, I'm speaking to myself too, right? Because sometimes when they're presenting something, it, they, they may have gone into med meditation for a few weeks or something, right? Mm -hmm. they may have started praying and, 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 and are really, you know, making a change about their ways before they actually, you know, decided to jump out there and put out this, uh, this you know, this divine message, right? But first thing we do is we discard them because of something in the past. Islam? Islam. So, you know, do righteous in all thy judgment. That's in Leviticus, I'm paraphrasing. Leviticus 19.15, what we was looking at, right? Islam. Islam. Okay. Rise, giving all praise to Allah, the highest honors was holy by Prophet Noble Ali. Well, did the forerunner say, make sure your, that your dollar is not defective too? He said, before they tabulate your virtues, see to it that nothing is defective about your appearance. From your shoes to your dollar. Mm -hmm. From your toes to your head, from your nails to your mouth. For in search of this, they will strike upon the one defect. It's long. It's long. It says, if there is one defect, they will say that you are careless about yourself and therefore will be careless about other things. To maintain a good personality, you must observe, observe all the rules of hygiene. Whew. Personal sanitation adds to conf confidence in you and complete satisfaction. Your appearance adds to your personal uh, confidence. With this personal confidence, you may face the world and win. Mm. What do you wear when you go to a job interview? Mm -hmm. Suit and tie. Fly thing in your closet. Suit and tie. Nice shoes, right? Why? Because you want to showcase the ability to showcase your second chance best. Do a first chance. There's one, right? So, you know, and you know, and one other thing is because sometimes it's required, but you know, but is it really required? Not necessarily. They recommend it, but you go to be to present the best of yourself. And oftentimes when we wear our best clothes, how do we walk? Upright. Upright. Independent. Fearless. With what? Confidence, as he says. Right, we go. Our chest poked out. We, you know, we get grab our suit jacket, button that joint up. Confidence, right? Yes, sir. We walk with that little swag. Islam. So he's talking. He's telling you about things that helps with the inner self. Islam. Confidence don't come from outside of you. That's right. It comes from within. Islam, Morris. It says. Mm, it says, to maintain a good personality, you must observe all the rules of hygiene. Personal sanitation adds to confidence. And, and you, uh, I skipped down, I read all that, face the world. Okay. It says, with the, person, with the personal defects, you naturally lose confidence and lose generally. Never let, any, anybody uh, never let anybody persuade you to go anyhow, even though you are not pre uh, presentable, because you are not going very far. Mm. <laughs> It may be just in that short distance that somebody of importance with deep scrutiny may observe you and conclude that you are a slack person and cause you to lose much. That's right. A perfect personality made through proper care of oneself is a passport to anywhere in the world, socially and otherwise. Never go eating in the street. 
Never go into company and expose your bad manners in any direction. Try to suppress those bad manners, leave them at home, and then go back home and work on them. Islamo. That's my input. Islam? Islam. <laughs> right? So it says leave them at home. But in order to leave them at home, you got to do what? You got to know they exist. You got to know that you, there are some bad manners that you have in order to even recognize that you need to leave, leave them at home. Right? If you were asking me what to study, I would say, right? If you will well have studied them and ask me next what to study, I would say, Islam. So continue to, you know, continue to study yourself so that when you do go out into society, you know that what you need to be cautious of within yourself. Islam, Islam. says, uh, try to suppress those bad manners, leave them at home. Eating and talking are bad manners in public, <laughs> which are excusable and proper at the, at the dinner table. Right. So he's not saying you shouldn't go out and eat anywhere. He's just saying, you know, don't be walking down the street and talking to somebody in their face and you eating a bag or whatever, holding it in your hand. Right. That's not very civilized. Islam. You can wait till you get to the table to eat. That's right. Islam. No matter how hungry you are, don't take your meals while walking. <laughs> and I didn't read that part. No matter how hungry you are, don't take your meals while walking and never eat as an individual at a public meeting before the audience. That's right. So when we, uh, you know, convene at, um, what's it called, Ebole, yes. Ethiopian. Ethiopian restaurant for a Grand Sheik's um, uh, birth, uh, birthright celebration, you know, the Grand Sheik got his food and, you know, Sister Taifa, uh, secretary, got her food. Uh, other, you know, many of us got our food and we sat, right? And we wait till everybody else get their food before we eat. That's right. Islam? Because that's the respectful thing to do. It's the civilized thing to do, if I could use civilized. Um, no individual public meeting before the audience. You will, lose, you will lose their respect immediately for not having regular meal hours and having your meals in an improper place which social regulations have established. Social regulations. See, <laughs> it's, it's the people who establishes the norms of society, right? Oh. Thus, social re regulations appear. Thus, laws are created, right, surrounding those social norms, right? So when we talk about nationality but, you know, earlier, let me go back. Um, earlier, he talked about character. And I wish I, wish I would have stopped when I read it, but I'd be going too fast. Mm, anyway, so earlier he talked about character, um, you know, being an importance. And so what is, what is nationality? So nationality is the quality and character that arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or state. So this character, this, this quality and this character is produced, you know, by, by, by the particular nation of people that you belong to. Right. Produced by the, the, you know, the rules and the the uh, the customs and the, you know, the um, the divine principles that, you know, that surround that particular nation of people. Right. So when we're talking about, you know, good character. <clears throat> these are also things that informs policy. Right. So what goes along with nationality, that definition of nationality, it says that nationality determines political status. Islam. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that it determines your status at law. It doesn't give you any kind of, you know, superpowers and rights to, to, to do whatever you want to do, you know, in society. But it is what helps inform, you know, policy makers based on the particular conduct that is uh, demonstrated by those, you know, those groups of people in society. Islam. So thus it, it establishes your political um, it establishes your political net. First of all, nationality is a socio-political construct, right? First of all, social because as a people, we demonstrate with one another based on, our, again, our customs and, and principles that determines who we are in society, right? And based on who we are in society determines how po policymakers place uh, or make, make and enforce law. Islam? So if we are in society doing everything according to the lower self, creating hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harms, then there are going to be policies that are put on, on, on the books to correct that thing. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Islam, Thus, we complain about particular, uh, you know, particular policy makers 
who create laws that are targeted at us. And we get incarcerated by the masses because we're, <laughs> in, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to, but we're, we're you know, getting uh, incarcerated by the masses because we're demonstrating principles that delude the slavery. Islam. Islam. So a crime bill wouldn't matter, right? A war on drugs wouldn't matter if we didn't what? Participate. If we didn't participate <laughs> in the use of drugs. Islam. If you use drugs, you go to jail. Islam. Islam. Islam, you sell drugs, you go to jail. And I'm not, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking the side of the, you know, the, the other. I'm not taking the side of the other. But at some point, we have to hold ourselves accountable right, for the things that we do in society. Come on, brother. We got to hold ourselves accountable. I read last week about self-initiative. Islam. So if we don't have these things in the place to properly raise our young children up to be strong enough to, to, to not, uh, uh, you know, engage in the, the principles that delude the slavery, then we won't have to worry about what kind of rules and laws that they put on the books that's going to affect us being incarcerated. Because if you put a, a, a law on a book, <coughs> how can you create a just law against a just practice? And I'm not saying that it wasn't done before. I'm not saying that it wasn't done before. But at this point, how can you govern wrongly a just people? Okay. Mm. Self accountability. We got to hold ourselves accountable for our own actions because if we have a problem with the rules that and the laws, et cetera, et cetera, or the people that are making the laws, if we have a problem with them, we have a responsibility to organize amongst ourselves and get them out the seat and put our own there. Right. Islam? Islam? See, time out for complaining, right? Time out for, to, you know, oh, they don't care about us. No, they, they never cared about you. Islam. If we were sitting back waiting on them to care about us, then we were waiting on the Jesus from 2,000 years ago to come back and save us. Wow. Yeah. Speak on it, Mark. Come on, man. Prophet said we're giving the, you know, the church and Christianity back to the European nations because it was founded by their forefathers for their earthly salvation. For, the, for their earthly salvation. That means they don't care about your salvation. That's right. It was founded for their earthly salvation. That's right. Islam? Islam? While we the Moorish Americans are returning to Islam because it was founded by our forefathers for our earthly and divine salvation. That's right. But if it was founded for our earthly and divine salvation, that means that we, we care about all of humanity. Because divine salvation... It doesn't, it doesn't only focus on you. Divine salvation ain't just for you. Islam? But he said earthly and divine salvation because he said earthly first because we got to save ourselves first. That's right. Then we can provide divine salvation to all people. Make sense? So, yeah, okay. A public platform is not a, a restaurant nor a dining room. Don't eat or even chew gum in people's faces. It is always an ugly sight and shows gross disrespect for company. You may chew your gum in your home, but not on a public platform nor at a public meeting. The man with a good appearance walks down the street with pride, courage, self-confidence, and self-respect. Self-respect. The man with a dirty shirt or dirty, dirty underwear and poorly kept clothes is selfly consciously afraid of himself and is therefore afraid of company. Hence, he is without confidence in himself. That's heavy. You know, I often say that in order to love someone else, you have to first love yourself, right? In order to trust someone else, you have to first trust yourself, right? He says, uh, he says, the man with a dirty shirt or dirty, dirty underwear and poorly kept clothes is self-consciously afraid of himself, right? And is therefore afraid of company, right? So somebody who's, you know, afraid of themselves, they're going to be afraid of company. Islam? Islam? Many of our people are afraid of themselves, thus they create or, or, you know, cause havoc in their own community, right? You step on my shoe and I get mad at you and I swing at you or I got to go to the trunk and all this other stuff, right? I'm afraid of myself. I don't know myself. I don't know who made me. Mm. Islam? Islam? But when I know who made me, when I know that Allah made me, right? When I you know, get rid of the principles that delude the slavery, 
then I can have some self-respect, right? Then respect other people. Islam? Islam. This again, this is, you know, I'm not speaking radical against, you know, anybody. I'm just, you know, I'm just talking about the, the principle of a thing, right? right? Islam? So, you know, work on, we have to work on ourselves so that once we go out, because if I'm aware, <laughs> if I'm aware that I know, that I don't know who made me, right, that's a good step because I'm aware of it. I'm conscious of it. Thus, I can guard it, right? See, in chapter five of our, you know, Holy Quran of the More Size Temple of America, it gives us tools for these things, right? It talks about the compass. The compass is used to circumscribe our passions and keep them within the bounds of righteousness, right? So if I know that there are things that are gonna cause passion and anger within me, then I, can, I bring out this tool to circumscribe those passions, to keep them bound, right? To keep it in control so that I don't act on it on somebody else, right? And I continue to use it because, again, the tools are used to, to what are tools used for? To build and fix things. So we should be able to get to a point to where we don't have to use the tools anymore. <laughs> Islam? Right, so what is, what is this representative of? What is this, this, this tassel? Yeah, re representative of degrees, absolutely. Um, let me see if I can remember. No. Well. I so in the Bible, it talks about, <laughs> it talks about, um, I want to say it's in Deuteronomy. I forgot. Anyway, I'll get back to it. But it, talk, I got you. it talks about, um, you know, the Israelites, they had a, a command to wear tassels or tzitzits around their garments. And these, these particular uh, tassels or tzitzits, they were designed for the Israelites to remember the law. Islam? Why did they need a reminder? Forgetful, right? You don't need a reminder unless you strayed off and done something else. Islam was? See, in, in chapter 47, it says, I don't know how I end up reading this every week, but <laughs> in, uh, in chapter 47, instruction 16, it says, through sin and disobedience, every nation has suffered slavery due to the fact that they honored not the creed and principles of their forefather, forefathers. That is why the nationality of the Moors was taken away from them in 1774 and the word Negro, black and colored was given to the Asiatics of America who were of Moorish descent because they honored not the principles of their, of their mother and father and strayed after the gods of Europe of whom they knew nothing. Islam? Islam. So this is representative of us being able to remember Allah, right? Remember Allah in all your ways. Mm -hmm. Remember Allah in all your doings. Islam. Remember Allah in all your relationships. Islam? Islam. So when we when we wear these, these are representative. They they representative, or they represent us remembering the law. Act three of our divine constitution and bylaws said, all members must proclaim. I'm sorry, so I'm all off. <laughs> Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Moorish Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. Islam? Islam. So, you know, that's one of the laws that we have to remember, right? In, in all things, this is, this is why this is a reminder. You know, it represents other things too, but you'll see, uh, you know, the, our brother Israelites, they'll wear, you know, these particular tassels on their, on the, you know, on the uh, hinge of their garments or the, their shirts or from their pants. And that's what it represents, you know. In in the you know in the in the um, in the Muslim world, you know, you have thicker, that's right. right? And thicker means what? Remember. To remember, right? You know, brother got the thicker beads on, Islam, and so he used those to to you know to uh, recite or chant, you know, the the ninety nine plus one names of Allah, right? To remember those particular um, attributes of Allah. Islam, truth, you know, all, the all truth, the all knowing, the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Islam, so it is, it is for us to remember Allah, to remember divine principles, to remember the spirit man, right? To remember that we are not the body nor the soul, but a spirit and part of Allah. 
And thus, the emotions and anger and anxiety and depression, etc., etc., that we experience are illusions. They're falsehood, and they will pass away. Islam? Islam. I didn't say that they were fake. <laughs> right? Because they are a part of our reality. They are a part of our, I'm part of They are a part of our, you know, a part of this plane of manifest. And it is a foe that we must fight. Again, it says, without a foe, a soldier never knows his strength, and thought must be developed by the exercise of strength. And so this carnal nature soon became a foe that man must fight that he might be the strength of Allah may manifest. Islam. 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 So you're on this particular plane to learn certain lessons. And our Quran says that, you know, man is sure to find himself where he can solve his problems best. Islam. So we, we all on a particular, you know, in, you, we are all in a particular space on our journey learning certain problems, solving certain life sums. Islam Morris? So we have to recognize the, the illusions of the world as well. In order to, to, you know, to become perfected man, you have to recognize the illusions of the world. Some things don't matter. Some things you can let fall by the wayside. Islam, you know, some things we should learn how to ignore and move past. Islam, boys. So, you know, these things that have a beginning must have an end because they are measured up by time. I say that every week. When we recognize the things that are measured up by time, we recognize that the only thing that's left is what? It's Allah. Allah is the only reality. Islam, boys? Islam. Islam. Um, so all praise is due to Allah, highest of honors to his holy and divine prophet. You know, I read some of that. This, this chapter is actually pretty long. I knew I wasn't going to get past it because I talk a lot. So, um, <laughs> But, you know, one of the things that uh, intrigued me about this chapter, talking about personality, and this is, this is le uh, lesson 15, is that in the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America, chapter 15, chapter 15 is entitled Divine Ministry of Jesus. And it says, Jesus goes to the wilderness for self-examination, right? Where he, where he remains 40 days, is subject to three temptations, he overcomes, returns to the camps of John and begins teaching, and begins teaching, right? So, well, I, I read, instruction one says, the harbinger had paved the way the Logos had been uh, introduced to men as love made manifest. And he must now begin his divine ministry. Instruction 2 says, And when he went forth into the wilderness to be alone with Allah, that he might look into, him, into his inner heart and note its strength and worthiness. And with himself he talked. He said, My lower self is strong. By many times I am bound down to carnal life. Right? So, what did he, in, in that instruction, he came to an awareness, right? We have to be aware of the things that we struggle with before we take them out into, the, into society and impose them on other people because we, we don't know how we're destroying other folks' you know, day <laughs> or whatever the case may be, right? So he was aware, right? He says, my lower self, he was talking to himself, right? My lower self is strong by many ties. I am bound down to carnal life. Have I the strength to overcome and give my life a willing sacrifice for men. When I shall stand before the face of men and they demand a proof of my messiahship, what will I say? And then the tempter came and said, if you be the son of Allah, command these stones to bread. <laughs> and Jesus said, who is it that demands a test? It is no sign that one is son of Allah because he does a miracle. The devil can do mighty things. That's long. So, Islam, according to our Quran, according to our, the Holy Quran and the Moorish Science Temple of America. Oh, the, uh, the, the young master said, are those the words that came out of Jesus' mouth? Did I say that right? So yes, and I, my response is absolutely. You know, according to the Holy Quran and the Moorish Science Temple of America. Islam? So, you know, the, so it says, and Jesus, who, who was, the, you know, the, the, the devil demanded a test, and Jesus said, you know, uh, it, it is no sign that one is son of Allah because he does not does a miracle. The devils can do mighty, uh, do mighty things. So, well, I'll keep reading. Well, no, I won't. Um, so, <laughs> so the devil can do mighty things, right? So, you know, again, when we don't when we don't know the devil, right? When we don't know our higher and lower selves, Islam, we will give credit to something outside of ourselves. Islam, the nearest place to me, Allah is in the heart. So even if we're giving credit to Allah, 
we don't have to look to the sky to do it. Islam. Islam, we were taught that for generations, right? For, for centuries, that Allah only exists outside of ourselves in the sky somewhere. <laughs> Islam, it's just not true. You know, if you only exist in the sky, you would be in the sky too. Islam. Just saying. So, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, you know, these lessons are for those who love Jesus. You know, going back to what we first talked about. Um, but we don't get caught up in, you know, in, in, uh, in, in things that are, that are measured up by time. Right? Because things that are measured up by time are illusions. They have a beginning and they must pass away. And the things that help us to be able to deal with those illusions are, the, you know, these divine principles that were given to us. But we have to study the principles. We don't have, see, we can't just, we can't just read the principles in, in the narrative. We have to stop, pull out the principle, and study it. Look up its, dis, you know, its definition. Look up its etymology or whatever, right? You know, find out what, what it really means. Then go back into the narrative and read it according to the narrative. Because then it takes on a different, you know, it, it takes on different meaning. Whether, r rather than just, you know, just knowing, you know, the, the general understanding of the word, right? Obedience, I'm sorry, I never got back to you. I got you. Um, you know, the word obedience is mentioned. But what does obedience really, really mean? Like, other than what it says in the narrative. You know what I'm saying? So we have to stop, pull out the word. And not just for the, 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 you know, the words that are principles, but all words. They all have particular context that can unfold within you, right? A man's ideal is his God. So as man unfolds, his God unfolds. Man's God today, tomorrow is not God. But we know that Allah is within man. Right? So we have to unfold Allah. <laughs> we have to unfold the Allah within. Islam was? Islam. So, Brother Akil. Islam, I was um, just going to say, we were talking about definitions and whatnot. Islam. So I was thinking, or the concept came to mind where, where you should always be striving to, to find the practical application of said definition. That's long. So that it's like you know how to utilize it. In, in the Quran it says, um, uh, it, it basically goes on to say it is the, the possessing of tools, it uh, basically is not having the things knowing how to use it. That's long. So in you being able to utilize said words, or utilize the concept and, the, and uh, again, practical application of uh, these lessons, uh, then you're able to guide yourself aright. Mm -hmm. um, you set your house in order. You're able to uh, govern your higher and lower self mm -hmm. so that you can uh, reach salvation. It's not. It's not, you know. You know, again, you know, we study, you know, we study the principles um, not to just know with them, not, not to just have knowledge or information about it, right? Um, but to, to, to utilize them. As the brother said, you know, it's not in the possessing of things, but in the knowing to use them, in the knowing how to use them, or in, in the knowing to use them, all right? So, you know, yeah, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, you know, is our standard, but am I using it? Am I, and I'm make, making it an applicable part of my everyday life, of all of my interactions, not only with other people, but with myself. Mm. Islam Islam. Uh, you know, forgiveness. <laughs> forgiveness is, 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 a, is a thing that we misunderstand oftentimes. You know, we think that it's only to, you know, so that we can relieve the other person of responsibility. No, forgiveness is for self. Islam, forgiveness is for you to relieve your own personal, you know, uh, responsibility of not being able to move forward and holding on or harboring a, uh, you know, a, bar uh, a burden <laughs> that's been placed on you by somebody else. Islam, Islam, forgiveness is for you. It's not for the other person. Well, it is for the other person, but it's first for you. <laughs> Islam, Islam, so, you know, learn how to forgive. Learn how to, you know, not, not hold on to, to things that's causing you to, you know, that's creating barriers for you to move on. Um, not, you know, and not necessarily for you to, to, you know, maintain a relationship with somebody else, but to that, that if you do see them in the future, there's no ill will toward them. 
You know what I'm saying? That you can, you know, just maintain being cordial with the person and continue on about your life. Slime Wars? So.